Hey everybody, uh, this is Scott from Space Coast Millworms and I want to give you the official tour of my worm shed that I finally finished this year. Um, and I also want to give you a weekly update for how I sift my worms every weekend. Here we are on the inside. I have put down flooring and insulation and drywall. Um, as someone who has never done any of those things, it was a definite learning curve, um, which is why it took me about a year to get this all done. Um, but let me give you the tour. Uh, this first half that you see is where all of my worms are at. So I've got my sifting uh, containers here with the buckets. I uh, built this 20 tub rack. This was my first rack that I built using these black concrete mixing tubs that I got from Home Depot years ago. Uh, they're about $6 each. Definitely a great investment. I use these every week. Um, whether I am using other trays or not, I still go to these um, when I do my sifting. Um, I've got uh, various sizes of worms here. I've got brand new eggs. Let's see if I can move any around and we'll see the substrate moving a little bit. Um, probably not this week. Try a little bit older. These are two weeks old. This will be a little bit movement. They're still kind of just waking up and hatching. There's four weeks old. You see a little bit of shedding on top which lets me know that they're active, move it around, and yeah, you can definitely see them moving now. So these are one month old. This is about the time where I would start adding vegetables uh, because they're they're definitely eating, they're signs that they're eating the bran, and they're probably thirsty. So um, I'll be adding vegetables later today to my bins, and I'll start with this one. I also have various other sizes. These are like medium size. Some of them are starting to pupate. Um, I've got even some that are forming beetles. Got a big mix of everything in between. Uh, this is my next rack that I built. These white trays are from an online restaurant vendor uh, called Websterant. And these are uh, pizza dough proofing trays. They're about $11 each. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the black tubs, but look how space saving they are. Um, in this in about four foot wide section, I have 20 trays. In this foot and a half section, I also have 20 trays. So if you are um, needing a, a smaller footprint, this is definitely the way to go. I do plan to build another one of these racks. Um, I designed it in Tinkercad, which is like a 3D modeling program. Um, and I just took the measurements right off the program after I had it all built. So I do plan to create designs um, to share, to make one of these things. Because um, it is so well built compared to this rickety thing uh, that I just built um, as I was going. So this is definitely good. Uh, in this ra at rack, I have mostly empty trays, mainly because I've been trying to fill this up for now. Uh, but this is my beetle storage space. It's actually one of my beetle storage spaces. This is actually the, uh, when I run out of room, I put them in this rack. Because over here, these rainbow towers, that's actually where all of my beetles are. I've got 30,000, give or take, Beetles over here. I put about a thousand beetles in a tray from various sizes. They've all turned black on these trays here. Um, so every couple weeks I sift through those. I try to stagger it so I just do one tower um, every two weeks. So I just finished this one this past weekend. So this is going to be the tower that I sift out today. Um, that way I'm not doing 30 every single weekend or every other weekend. Um, it's really um, one tower, about 10 trays every three weeks. Um, it really doesn't matter 
if you sift out every week or every three weeks. I just have so many that all of the substrate, when I collect it all, it's going to fill up a lot of the black tubs. And I, as you can see, I'm already starting to run out of space. So um, when I first started this method, I sifted every week. Um, and then I moved to every two weeks. But now I'm pretty much every three weeks um, creating one little container of it every three weeks. Uh, this tray here, this is actually a lucky find for me. I was driving down the road in my neighborhood and I saw this on the side of the road being uh, next to the trash can to be thrown out. The woman who was throwing it out, she happens to own an ice cream shop and this is just an extra rack that they had. Um, these are just, uh, they're the perfect width but they're not the uh, tall enough to fit the white trays. So instead I just found that these large priority boxes that are completely free fit perfectly in here. Um, I could get the, the metal aluminum baking sheets, but why spend money when I can do this for free? Um, and they fit perfectly in here, and I can put my super worm pupa, or worms trying to be pupas, on here. I can fit 48 in a sheet. I could probably even stack them in stacks of two to get almost 100. But for now, I don't have that many. Oops, I'm putting it in the wrong slot. That's the problem. So for now I just have 48 going, really 96 total because I've got two racks so far. Um, my super worms are at the very, very top. I'm really, really good at killing super worms. Um, and so I start over again often, but here I am starting again. Um, I have some local customers who buy them from me, so I want to keep on growing them. Um, but it's it's still getting really difficult for me to breed them. So maybe now that I'm in the shed, things will work out better and I won't kill them. Fingers crossed. Uh, this is my main table that I do all my sifting on. I have a, a blue tote down here with all of my wheat bran. Uh, this tote here, the whitish one, has all of my chick starter feed that I've been using. I've been adding an extra scoop or so for all, all my tubs. They absolutely love it gives them a little bit extra nutrients and they grow faster and larger with chicken starter feed. Uh, there's my 16 by 24 sifting tray that I use. We'll be using that later today when I show you. Um, and this is my vacuum cleaner that I use. It's actually it's called a bucket head from Home Depot. It's, you buy just this little uh, top part but it fits right on top of one of their buckets. Um, super cheap is like 15 or 20 dollars. And this is what I suck up all of the sheddings with. Um, instead of blowing them outside like I used to do, I suck them and they just stay right in the, in the bucket. And I can bag that bucket once the bucket gets filled. So that's this half of my shed. Trash can, air conditioning. Um, the other half is the tray business side. For the most part, I have my little office, my filing cabinet, and my computer for me to do all of my orders, my printer, stickers, tape, all that fun stuff, all of the labels that I put on boxes or the letters that I put inside of boxes. Here's the uh, shipping supply corner. Again, these are all free. If you go to the USPS website, you can get these boxes. Um, these bottom boxes are for, for when I do small uh, worm orders. I've got egg flats for a variety of uses. Uh, newspapers for packing. I just asked my um, next door app um, for donations and I got tons of them. Here are all the uh, sifting trays that I currently have in stock. Uh, more boxes, more packages, everything. Uh, here are my little cups. I also got these from the restaurant site. These are what uh, I send my local worm orders in. Um, and I do plan on selling frass locally. So I have these containers already set up. I have the instructions for how to use frass depending on how you are growing your plants. So these are ready and waiting for me to fill. So if I do like a farmer's market, I can sell them there. Here's my amazing free refrigerator someone just donated. They were upgrading. It doesn't cool perfectly, but it works enough for me as long as the freezer works. This is where I keep all of my wheat bran. Um, I buy this brand. It's twenty dollars and ninety-seven cents for my local feed store, which is probably the most expensive you'll find. 
Um, most of you who live more rural areas will get it like $12, $15 for the 50 pound bag. Regardless, I have a freezer that's large enough that this fits right in here. I just keep the bag in here um, until I need it. So, um, and in the fridge is where I keep worms, especially once I box them up, I put them in the fridge overnight until I can ship them out the next day. Um, and this corner here is my mess of a corner. Here are all my supplies from drywall and painting and all that fun stuff that I still need to put away. Uh, but here's where I, I am keeping all of my frass. I have these large priority boxes that hold 10 pounds exactly in each one. I have these pool buckets that I have gotten free from a uh, swimming pool supply company. They, they've got hundreds of these in the back of their shop. They take, let you take them. Just got to let them know what you're taking them, uh, when you're taking them. And I dump them in my parents' pool to wash them out, dry them out wash them again with soap on the inside, um, dry them again, and now I have frass stored in each of these buckets. You got a nice little lid on them. Um, there you go, there's the frass. Uh, usually when I don't have bran in my freezer, I dump the bucket or the box in just to freeze anything that might be mixed in with the frass uh, before I sell it or store it long term. I have probably 10 of these buckets behind the shed already filled. The buckets hold 20 pounds each. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of frass. So if you know someone who's buying frass, let me know. I got plenty for them. Um, and last I have my cups, my little condiment cup. These are what, two ounce, I believe. Yep, two ounce cups that I use for my supers when I'm isolating to turn into beetles. Um, I have some storage lofts up in the top of each side. This is eventually where all of my cardboard boxes are going to go because long-term plan is that that corner is going to be where my laser cutter is going to go. Um, saving up for that next so that I don't have to use a third-party company to cut my trays. I can cut them myself and always have them in stock and ship out the next day whenever I get an order. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Air conditioning. It's set at 75 to keep the shed uh, bearable for me, uh, but warm enough for the worms. If the AC is at 75, the worms will be around 79 to 82, depending on their age, which is optimal temperature for them. In this next section, I'm going to show you how I do my weekly maintenance. I have not touched any of my worms uh, for about seven days, so there is shedding on top of a lot of the trays. I have got pupas in some of the trays. And I need to sift all of that out, and I do that on a weekly basis. Uh, we're just going to start with a um, plain old tray here. This tray should not have any beetles. There might be a couple pupa in here, uh, but these worms are medium in size, so um, unless there's a lot of frass, they shouldn't be pupating this early. Um, I have a, other trays with larger worms for that. Uh, the first step I want to do is get rid of all the sheddings that are on top. I don't want to mess with the substrate at all uh, because the shedding will get mixed in. I'd rather get rid of it now while it's still on top. Naturally, when they shed, the sheddings will kind of float to the surface because they're lighter and the, the wiggling of the substrate below kind of pushes them up. Um, so now's the time to get rid of them. Just turn on my vacuum. If you want to try this yourself, the trick is to hold the nozzle far away, as, as far away as you can, uh, but close enough that it just barely picks up the shedding. The shedding is a lot lighter than the worms and the substrate, so if you get that right magic spot, you're not going to pick up any substrate, you're not going to suck up any worms, you're just going to suck up the sheddings on top. Okay, if you get too close, then yes, you can absolutely pick up worms and substrate, which you don't want too far away, you're not going to pick up anything. So you just got to find that right magic spot uh, right in the middle of the two. And I'm going to do one pass and then I'll probably do a second pass because as I'm um, clearing it out, more worms are moving underneath and will loosen up some more sheddings. So here's my first pass.
Now, I can see it just with my own eyes, um, but eventually you're going to realize that there's still some shedding in here, um, and it's mixed in, and the only way to get to that shedding is through the sifting process. So I'm going to do a third pass, but not right now. I'm going to sift out all of the worms and the sheddings um, first and get rid of all the substrate, and then I can uh, do another pass to get rid of the, the any uh, sheddings that are left over. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, I'm going to get an extra one of these concrete tubs. This is where I'm going to have all, the, all of my worms. All of my substrate is going to go in a third tub down below. And all I really do is take a scoop. This is just a basic scoop from a feed store. And I scoop about one and a half of these into my green sifting pans. Two scoops is a little bit too much, but one and a half is just right. Right. And um, I do have the black exercise vibrating machine um, that I, and I use sometimes every now and then. But honestly, I just love to stand here and do it this manually. Uh, the shape of the green sifting pans is circular. So when I sift, I sift in a circular motion and it works really well as opposed to that machine there, which just alternates left and right um, and it doesn't work as good with this because of the shape of my sifting pan. If I had a rectangular pan that might be different. Um, it, it works really well with my sifting, my pupa sifting trays, um, but it doesn't work so well with my round one. Um, I don't know, you might have different success for me, but this is just my preference to stand over and manually, manually swirl this. Got a couple left. This is the one half mesh size. It really isn't needed. Um, I like to use it because if there's any leftover food particles that'll get stuck here, like potato um, skins or carrots or whatever you use, it gets stuck here. Um, it's also an extra couple inches of space that the worms have to fall through, so it kind of stretches out um, the material so it doesn't all bunch up in one tray all at once. Rowan again. This is my one, was it one fourth size? Uh, really, the worms all fall through here. The only thing I'll get left here are smaller food chunks. In this case, this is the chick starter pellets that haven't really been pelletized well. So I usually just dump them back in. Eventually, the worms will eat them. But not a big deal. A little stray worm here. There you go, buddy. I also dump these upside down so any worms that might get stuck will fall on the table and then I can scoop them in afterwards. All right, this is my 1 8 size. This is the workhorse of the whole system. This will catch most of your large worms, well, all of your large worms really. It will also catch your pupa and all of your beetles if you have any. So this 1 8 size is a must. If you don't have these trays, there is a link below in the comments, uh, please use that link. It's an affiliate link, and that's how we get the money to uh, pay for our mealwormfarming.org or .com uh, website. Um, like the little few pennies that we get from the affiliate link, they add up and they help pay that yearly cost. All right, so I've got nothing but worms here. I've got a tray that I want to put the worms into. I'm not just going to pick this up and dump it because then I'll have worms all over my floor, which I don't want. Um, so instead, I'm going to, going to pick up the tray vertically so there's a little bit of a gap. If they do fall, they fall straight down in the next tray. And then I just kind of take this and scoop it under. That way, you see they're still falling, but now they're falling into the tray. I have zero mess on my floor. We're all good. Okay. So most of them have been dumped out, given a couple taps. Uh, but you still see a lot of them stuck <coughs> inside of the mesh. This is perfectly normal. It just means they are um, in that weird size in between my, my, uh, this tray and the next size. Um, they're small enough to get half their body through, but their other half gets a little bit stuck. So I, you just have to kind of tickle them out. I hold the tray from the back side, separating the, the green from the screen. I do have a more in-depth video of this. If you haven't seen that, it goes through this process a little bit more. But I just lightly 
graze my fingers. Um, one of the people in the comments said to use a paintbrush, which, which is a brilliant idea. Um, so props to whoever said that. Um, but I use my hands. I like to use my hands because if I kill one, I can feel it and it lets me know that I'm using it too hard. Uh, if you kill one, it'll feel a little bit wet on your hand. Another reason why I wear gloves. Come on, tickle out, tickle out, buddy. Sometimes you have to tickle from the back side. There we go. Check out any more that are there. Good, good, good. All right. So that was the 1 8 size. If you are sifting worms to sell, um, these are the uh, worm sizes that are best to ship um, because they're the largest worms that you're going to pretty much get. Uh, the next size is going to be a little bit smaller, so your weights will alter. All right, so this tray, it's almost sifted for me because of the motion of the worms. And I'm going to give it a, a few more swirls so any extra brand that's in there can fall through. As you can see, the majority of my worms are right here in this tray compared to the 1 8. So most of this tray, I would say those are medium sized worms compared to um, large or medium large over here. So it just lets you know um, what size your worms are as you're sifting in case it matters. A um, little bit of brand pieces left, but they're just the large pieces of brand. Not a big deal. Okay. Again, tickle out. You can see there's very few worms caught on this screen, which means I have very few worms that are smaller than 1 12th, I think this screen meshes. Yep, smaller than 1 12th. So if you're sizing your worms, um, it's good to note that you can use the mesh sizes to see how big your worms are. Down below, I might have a few babies in here, uh, but mostly it's just your substrate and the frass is below that. Um, this is the 1 20th screen and then the extra 1 30th. I'm going to take care of this in just a moment. Uh, but let's go back to these worms that I've isolated. Here is the time where I usually vacuum out for the third step to get the extra sheddings that have gone through. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real fast. So now I've got nothing but healthy worms and a little bit of uh, wheat bran mixed in um, and maybe some food pellets if you're using the chick starter like I am. All right, we are going to do the exact same thing for the rest of this, uh, but before I add more scoops, I need to take care of this wheat bran that has fallen through. This is what my third container is for. So I swirl, I dump. At this size, the worm shouldn't be small enough to fit through this mesh, so I'm not worried about scooping underneath. Here's my 1 30th size. If you just had a five piece, then all of this wheat bran, and this is wheat bran still, gets mixed in with your frass. So this 1 30th is so important because it stops all of your small wheat bran from mixing in with your frass. The frass is down below. Wheat bran is soft, whereas frass is sand-like and gritty to the, to the touch. So this is pure frass. I don't know if there was an extra mesh size, if this would fall through it. Um, I haven't tried a like a 1 40th or a 1 50th, um, but the 1 30 is magic. So I've got nothing but frass down here. So reset all of my sifting pans. We'll start with another scoop and a half, and we're going to repeat until we get all of this over there. I'll go faster this time.
I have separated all my worms. I have most of the shedding gone. They're very healthy and happy. Uh, if I wanted to uh, sell these worms, I can use a method to separate them from whatever brand is in here um, so that I isolate them into just pure worms. So let me show you that method real fast. I'm going to get two egg flats. You can buy these online. You can um, I don't know, ask a local farm for them. Lots of options. And I'm going to use these to transfer worms from over here to over here. One of the things that worms do is that they cling on to um, cardboard really well. So if I put worms inside of here, put them right on top, right on top, right on top, um, I can flip it over and I'm going to get worms that stick to my cardboard. And all I have to do is dump them in here, shake them against the side a little bit, it's all clean, and I have now nothing but pure worms. No pupa, no dead material, very little bran, and I can ship these out wherever I want. Um, there's even faster method, and I do have a video that shows this again, um, but here is that method, ready? You do the same thing, you put worms on your tray, but then you get a second tray, and instead of putting it directly on top, you kind of twist it 90 degrees so it kind of fits better, and on top of that, you put some more worms. then you flip. So now we have so much surface area, right? lots of worms stuck. I can dump them over here, just like before. And now I've already got another egg flat that they're sticking to, and it kind of speeds up the process. The reason why I dump them on top is they already start to stick to this surface. So when I flip it over, look how many more are on top now, because I dumped them on this side originally. I have just as many on both sides. So I, this is a very, very fast process. I can get thousands of worms in just a few shakes. See, this is probably two or 3,000 worms right here, and it's nothing but pure worms ready to sell, ready to feed off, ready to do whatever you do with worms. Okay, So I don't know if you can see the difference between these two sides. This has a lot of bran in it still. This doesn't. Right. So that's the method. I'm not separating my worms today. So I'm just going to dump them all back in here. Clean off my egg flats. By the way, you can do this exact same method with beetles. To separate your live beetles from your dead beetles. When we sift out my beetles today, I will do that so you can see it in action. It's the exact same method. Beetles climb on to cardboard. They actually prefer to be uh, on something rather than in the substrate. So we can use that method for our beetles. Okay. For now, I'm just going to take all of my substrate and put it back in. There is zero frass in here now and very, very little sheddings. Uh, this isn't a lot of substrate. They're going to probably eat through all of this in the next week, especially at this age. So I'm going to add an extra scoop of wheat bran. Should be good for a week. And also add a scoop of my chick starter. I buy the crumbles, so they're kind of smart, uh, not smart, small already. Uh, you can get any size really that you want. 
Um, some people just get the, the powder um, so they don't have to even worry about crumbles. I like the crumbles because I can feel them so I know when I still have chick starter in here or not. I'm not putting too much. I don't know that there really is even too much to, to put in. Um, some farmers have gotten rid of bran altogether and they only use chick starter. Uh, for me it's a little more expensive than bran is so I still like to do mostly bran. It's usually a two parts bran to one part crumble that I use for mine. Um, but some people use 100% crumble so it really is up to you and your budget and your availability to wheat bran. Okay, so this is just going to go right back where it goes. Alright, now I'm going to show you how I use my pupa sifting tray to separate the pupa from my trays if I've got trays that have pupa in them. Right, so here is a perfect example. Um, hopefully you don't have beetles in them like I do. The trick is to sift out pupa often enough that they don't ever turn into beetles. Um, but with this warm Florida weather, it takes less than a week sometimes for my pupa to turn into beetles. Um, so even though I sift weekly, sometimes I get some beetles. Um, let me uh, suck out all of the sheddings first. Alright, now as you can see, there are a lot of pupa in here, um, and some substrate, and a little bit of frass, and actually a lot of frass, um, and some beetles. So I'm just going to dump this entire bin into my pupa sifting tray. Um, I designed this extra large tray so that it fits perfectly in the $6 concrete mixing tubs. Um, but even if you had one of the uh, smaller sizes, you can have one of these tubs and just shake by hand. Uh, but, but because this fits perfectly, all I have to do is sit it in and I shake the tray instead. Um, and I can fit an entire bit, uh, container into this at once. Um, I uh, sell these now without this handle built in um, because some customers were complaining that it kind of falls out when you're shaking it vigorously enough um, so the new ones don't have these this is just an older tray so dump the entire thing in I like to even it out a little bit at first and in theory you could just let it sit here and it will self uh, sort itself um, but I like all of this to take less than a minute so I shake myself. I just go back and forth. You can see the pupa are already starting to show up. Everything else falls through. Except some of the beetles and all of the pupa. I don't see any worms. There's like maybe one or two extras. For the most part, I've just sifted out all of my pupa and a few beetles. So I transfer this into a new container. And just like that, I have all of those pupa sifted. Um, but here's a problem. I've got a bunch of pupa stuck in between my slots. So we still have beetles, very few pupa there. But all, a lot of pupa are still here. So this takes a little bit of time, um, especially if you have beetles, because uh, the beetles are just pesky. Um, but I need to get all of these pupa out of the slots. I used to use my fingers and just kind of like bend the rods in between like that, and they fall through. You know, I've turned this thing upside down. Um, but it doesn't help with some that are stuck on the sides here. 
So lately I've been, just been using a knife. You can use a butter knife, it doesn't have to be sharp. Um, but I kind of use the knife to do the twisting. Um, and I also just kind of use it to... <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. To push down the pupa, especially the ones that are on the side. You can either drag them to the middle and then open it up or just kind of push them down. Um, you'll feel how much pressure you really need. Um, and, you know, I'm not killing them. I'm just putting them down. The sharp side is on top. So not like I'm cutting them open or anything. Just giving them a little bit of extra support or pressure to fall down. Okay. And, what, less than a minute, I, I cleared that whole side right there. Okay, so do this for the rest of them. tray no more beetles and check out all of these pupa isn't that amazing a couple worms that you can either hand pick out and grab them or what I do is I, I know they're gonna turn into pupa soon so I just leave them in um, if I can't grab them and eventually they'll pupate on their own. Easier to leave two or three worms in here than to leave a thousand pupa in there. Right? The pupa will get cannibalized in here. Here, not a problem. All right, um, let's weigh this to find out how many pupa we have. So I have almost 13 ounces of pupa. Um, if you do a little bit of math, assuming that they weigh about the same weight as a worm, a worm is 0.42 ounces, 12.49, divided by 0.2, 
sorry, uh, it's 4.2 ounces is a thousand. That's what I meant to say. 4.2. We've got almost 3,000 pupa just in this one tray. Um, so this I could easily spread into three of those trays um, to give them enough space. Um, and I'll show you when I do that. But when I do it, I kind of spread this way so it's a nice even spread. And I try to get just one layer um, so they're not stacked up on top of each other. Um, for now, though, what I usually do, because that's just one tray that I'm sifting right now, I usually have just a tray for pupa to sit in until I'm done sifting all of my trays. That way, they're all together until I'm ready to tray them with substrate and everything. So I'm going to set this off to the side for now. Actually, I'll put it over here. So that's out of the way. Actually, nope, I shouldn't do that because I still have beetles in here. Um, at this point, I still do have beetles. I can easily pick out the beetles on top. Um, and any little pupa that I still see. See, there, this pupa would have been caught in the sifter, but it's soft and brand new. That's why it got through. So if you see any of those, feel free to put those in. Um, same thing with these new beetles. They're soft and squishy. And you go right through the sifting slots as well. Got the pupa. Uh, the problem with sifting like this is that there are some beetles probably underneath that I can't get to. So I need to run this through my buckets in order to get to the rest of the beetles. So I'm going to do that real fast to show you. Um, I see some shedding, so I'm going to uh, suck these up first. <laughs> my worms fall onto the ground I usually leave them on the ground I'll use uh, I'll sweep them out of the shed at the end um, but I don't like to pick them off the ground and put them back in um, I use bug spray along my perimeter um, to keep any ants or any other bugs out of my shed um, and I don't know if any of that spray has found its way onto the floor so I don't want to introduce anything harmful to the rest of my worms by picking up a fallen worm. So, yes, I feel bad because these things are probably going to be eaten by other critters outside or stepped on by me accidentally today. Um, but I leave them there for the safety of the rest of the worms. Don't want any poisons or whatever's on my floor to get mixed in. Hope that makes sense. Now that there is zero bran in this mix, 
I can see the beetles a lot easier so that I can hand pick them out to remove them from this batch. And if I'm smart, I'm going to sift this batch um, sooner rather than later so that I don't get any more beetles accidentally. All right, so there's tons of beetles in here. Um, it does seem like it will take a long time to get through them all, um, but it's important to do. Otherwise, you're going to have them laying eggs in the substrate, and then you can't sift out the frass. That's a big mess. So, get rid of all your beetles so that there's no eggs this next week in here. You can sift like normal. Active. They've just turned black, so they're at their sexual maturity at the moment, or sexual peak, I guess. They are fast and looking for love, which is great if they're all by themselves. Not so great when you're trying to catch them by hand. It's also helpful to find any pupa that are still here. Uh, some farmers, these small pupa, they isolate them to kind of uh, get rid of any small uh, babies or small worms. Because if maybe they're small now, they'll continue to create more small worms in the future. It's kind of like a Darwinism, I guess selecting the largest and only the largest to breed. If you've got the time to do that, it, it, it works. Um, but I want as many worms as I can get, regardless of size. So for now, everything gets put over. Uh, some farmers sell by quantity. They count out their worms um, user, using the weighing method that I did before. Um, others actually sell by weight. So they'll sell like a pound of worms or a kilogram at a time. I kind of personally prefer to sell by weight if a customer wants that because then it doesn't really matter what size your worms are. You still get the same mass of worms because you are getting a specific weight, whether it's a thousand worms or 1,200 smaller worms, it's still the same weight that you ordered. Um, so as a seller, I ideally would prefer that if customers purchased by weight, that way I can sell them any size worm that I had, Oops. as long as it matched what they ordered weight-wise. But a lot of times, the customer that I sell to is a fellow farmer, and they want quantity, not necessarily a weight. Let's see, in just this short a time, I've cleared out all the beetles from this section, mostly. I'm going to rotate the tray to move to a different section. A few more pupa. I normally have music playing, so this isn't as lonely and boring 
as it might feel right now if you're watching this. But hopefully I'm speeding this up so you don't have to get bored like I am. show you how I sift out my beetles from my eggs. Again, I have all of my beetle trays over here. Um, I said I was going to start on this side. So there's my beetles that I've got. Now these are my oldest beetles, so you'll see some dead ones mixed in with a lot of live ones. They love to climb on cardboard, so I tried to put a piece in here, got a couple worms. Um, these are old worms that got mixed in. I'm just going to throw them into my worm container. Um, so let's mix these, or let's uh, sift these out. First thing I want to do is get all of the beetles out of my cardboard containers. You can use toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, uh, cut up egg flats, really up to you. Um, here's an old piece of potato skin that I usually pick out first. Okay. I think that's all I had. I think I put two pieces in. All right. Now I have my bucket sifters there, the six pieces, but I bought an extra 1 18th sifter and have a second bucket just for my eggs. Um, just because I don't want any egg residue from here to accidentally be mixed in with my frass. I want it complete and separate. Same thing with any egg residue that might be on here. Um, so I bought an extra 1 18th just to make sure I didn't cross contaminate. Not that it's really contamination, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, and that way I can have a whole separate system. So I jumped, uh, just dumped the entire bin in here. Now when you dump your bin, you're going to see a lot of eggs stuck to the bottom of the tray. This is a good sign because it lets you know that these beetles are still active, even though I have some dead ones, they're still actively reproducing. Um, the biggest debate currently that I've seen in uh, like Facebook groups is whether or not to scrape these off into 
the rest of the uh, substrate or to leave them there. People are concerned that they are going to kill whatever worms are on, on the inside of these eggs if they scrape them. Um, and honestly, I've yet to test it myself. Uh, one way you could test it just out of curiosity is to scrape them into a new container and see if that new container ends up hatching eggs and baby worms. Um, that's easy to do if you have the time and the container to do that with. Um, I'll let you decide if you want to do that or not on your own. Um, what I usually do is I just leave them there um, and I, I know they're eventually going to hatch. Um, they might hatch within the next week so if I put in new substrate and new beetles if they hatch they'll just be mixed in with that substrate um, and they'll be in the next bucket uh, the next time I sift these out. So yes in theory these will be a little bit older than the remaining worms um, in the new bucket or the new tray um, but at least I'm not killing them accidentally by scraping. So it's really up to you which method you choose. I am just choosing to err on the side of safety because I haven't tested it myself. Uh, when it comes to substrate I put um, about three-fifths or four-fifths of a scoop in here. Really just need enough to cover the bottom with about an inch of bedding, a substrate. They don't need too much, as you can see on the side. It's maybe even a half an inch in some parts. They don't need a lot. Most of the beetles will be on the surface, especially if you have a paper towel roll. Um, they only go down to the bottom to lay their eggs. So as long as they can go down to lay, they're fine. Okay, so I always add my substrate first before I sift out in the bucket. That way when I'm done, I have a place to dump them. This is just as simple as sifting regularly. I go in a circular motion. The 1 8 size is perfect for beetles because it stops every single beetle and still allows your substrate to fall through. So right now I've got nothing but beetles. And the substrate with eggs is down below. Okay, so I just dump these in. Couple stragglers. Has that some? Thought I saw a worm somewhere. I'll get them next time. Not a big deal. Now, if I've got a lot of dead beetles in a tray, I won't just put them back because they will start to smell. Um, I'll usually use the egg flat system to separate my live from my dead. Um, I can show you that system in just a moment. Um, but for now, I see that they are still reproducing, so I've got a lot of active beetles in here. I'm not going to um, remove any for now because they're still doing their job. Oh, let's put back the paper towel roll. Later today, I'm gonna put in food. Um, but for now, that tray's done. And I just move on to the next tray and remove old pieces of food. These are potato slices that I put in earlier this week. Uh, I the only caution I can give you about using cardboard is they will lay eggs on it at times, um, so don't throw them away. Just keep reusing them. Um, if you do, if they do deteriorate to the point where you want to throw them away, um, just set them on top of your uh, baby bin for a little while to let the babies hatch and crawl off of it before you throw it away. So um, you'll get probably a, a few months use out of each piece of cardboard. For now, I'm just going to reuse it. Again, dump. Remember I have the original tray in here. I'm just going to dump all 10 of my trays in this first tower into the same bucket. It almost fills the entire bucket um, and then that will fill an entire black tray to then turn into worms. there are eggs at the bottom of this tray, so they're nice and happy. Dump them in. And 
repeat, put the cardboard back in, get a new tray. I'm going to do this for all 10 trays in that tower. Get rid of any food. clumps on the bottom. That's a good sign. When you stop seeing eggs on the bottom, your beetles will probably still be alive, but they just aren't reproducing and laying eggs anymore. Uh, they will last a few months in the right conditions, but they lay the most amount of eggs in like their second to fifth week of being alive and then it kind of just tapers off after that over time so when you stop seeing eggs on the bottom that's your sign to uh, get rid of them a lot of people feed their uh, dead beetles or their elderly beetles to their chickens if you have any chickens um, as long as I've got the room for them I, j I keep them alive until they kind of just die off and then I get rid of them once they die softy like that I guess I don't know. All right.
see here, I have uh, Chick Starter. I was kind of experimenting a little bit by adding Chick Starter to the beetles uh, to see if they enjoyed eating that as much as the worms do. Um, the problem though is that it doesn't sift that well. So there might be eggs attached to this that will stay in here for a while. Um, that's the only issue that I see with using Chick Starter. Um, so I, I would advise against it if you like to be able to sift all of your substrate every week. But it was just a fun test to see if, if it worked. See all the eggs that were on that cardboard piece. All this dust is eggs as well. on the tray. sifted and all of the eggs from those 10 trays are now inside of this bucket it's almost full I'm going to get take a new plastic bin I'm gonna dump the bucket right inside my new egg tray for the week. Right up there. And that's it. So here I have all of my pupa and I want to start a new pupa tray or new beetle tray. So I'm just going to scatter a single layer as best as I can of pupa. I'm using this larger tray because I ran out of my rainbow trays. So whatever you have is what you can use. Oops. There you go. Nice single layer of pupa. Go we'll add it to the rest. Alright, so the next thing I want to show you is um, about these round sifting trays. Again, most of my trays are rectangular in nature, but I've got these two round ones. Um, and this 
uh, it looks blue, but it's really clear once you take the, the film off. Uh, this is actually my most popular uh, selling tray that I have. So let's talk about these. Uh, these are meant to be used with your green bucket sifting system that a lot of you already have. Um, instead of having a whole uh, additional tray that you've got to use with your own little bucket, um, this these just fit right in on top, and it allows you to sift all of your worms and everything in the same um, method. Uh, the difference between the two, uh, this wood one is a quarter inch birch. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little durable. Um, this is one eighth inch acrylic. It's a little more flexible. Um, and you can wash it or clean it um, as opposed to the wooden ver version of it. They're both identical in design and size. Uh, this one is um, a little bit more expensive, mainly because the acrylic material itself is more expensive. Um, otherwise, I'd charge the same price. I, I don't favor one over the other. Um, the biggest question I get, and I actually had this question just yesterday, is um, how to correctly insert them into this top tray. Um, <coughs> a lot of new farmers who get these, they write and say, hey, it doesn't fit, it's, it's, it's the wrong size. Um, and it's because they are thinking that these trays have to sit flush on the bottom of this pan. Um, I designed it so that wouldn't be the case. Reason being is if worms are falling through these slots and the, the tray is flush against these metal uh, wires, then the worms might get stuck between the uh, tray insert and the metal. So I wanted a little bit of a gap between the two. So when we insert these properly, you're going to uh, see that there's like an inch or so. Um, again, a lot of people, when they try to put them in, it kind of looks wonky like that, a little diagonal. Um, and then they email and tell me that they're upset. And of course, my response is, well, let me show you how to put it in the correct way. So here's the correct way to insert one of these trays. You actually have to turn it upside down and turn this tray upside down and with two hands just kind of sandwich them together and I don't know if you can see it well but there's certainly about a one inch gap between the metal and the wood but it's nice and parallel with each other this is nice and flat now there's zero gaps around the edges for the worms to fall through they can only go through the slots Again, and there's plenty of space between the wood and the metal that they don't get stuck. Um, same exact procedure with the acrylic. Um, let's show you this in action. I have a scoop full of worms and substrate, and <coughs> it doesn't look like there's any pupa in there, but we're going to see there are tons. Ready? Just dump it in. The only drawback I could see with these round trays is it doesn't allow a lot of space for your substrate. This is not an issue if your farm is about that size and you have small containers. But if you're using these gigantic ones, um, these round ones are probably not the right ones for you. You should pro probably be using one of my extra large ones. Um, but we do the same method with just the swirling motion. All of the bran falls through, which it has already. Now the worms are falling through. check. Got a little beetle. A little beetle. And very, very few worms on top. This one just needs help getting down. And that's about it. We have all these pupa that have been stopped by this round insert. Uh, if your tray gets stuck, oops, I hopefully I didn't just crush those. If the tray gets stuck, uh, what I do sometimes is I just get a knife or something and poke through the other side to kind of push it out um, to unstick it. Or you can tap lightly. That'll work. I think I need a third pair of hands for this one. All right. There we go. So we have our pupa in there. Let's check the rest of the trays. I've got a couple beetles here that will crawl through. Again, it's not a beetle sifting tray, it's a pupa sifting tray, so that's 
going to happen. And down below, we got a couple more beetles and worms. That's it. So it stopped every single pupa. The only thing it didn't stop are some of these new beetles that like to squeeze through the slots. And if you sift before you have any beetles at all, this won't be an issue. So check out the round pupa sifting tray inserts if you're interested. Um, because if you already have the green system uh, and you don't have these big buckets here to, to, to uh, have them fall into, this bucket system and these trays are a perfect fit. Alright, so I showed you this earlier in the video. Uh, these are my super worm um, pupa that I'm trying to get to pupate. Um, I put one pupa in each of these two ounce containers. I do not put any bran in them. I do not poke a hole in the lid. Um, the point is to stress them out enough that they pupate on their own. Um, so a lot of you might hear that you need to poke holes and you need to feed them. It, that's, that's not needed at all. As long as they're at the right temperature, they will pupate on their own. Um, the other thing they also need is to be long enough. Now I have some here that have pupated and some that have not. These are taken from the same batch. Um, and usually the, the issue is because this one just wasn't long enough. As you saw before, I picked out a shedding, so it wasn't ready, this one on the left was, um, wasn't ready to pupate. A lot of people, when they cup worms, um, all of these worms that aren't ready, they put right back into the container. Um, and the ones that are ready have either turned into a pupa or they turned into a C shape like this one here, um, and they'll leave the C-shaped ones to continue to pupate. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate all of my pupa from my worms, from my C-shaped ones, um, so that I don't kill any. Like if, if this one isn't ready to pupate and he's stuck in here without food, he's just going to eventually die. He's going to turn into a black mush um, and stink up my entire shed. So let me grab my container of mealworms that I have here. So for all those that aren't ready, I'm just going to put right back. Figure out some spacing on this one. Here we go. And for the pupa that are ready, I'm just going to put into a side container for now. So that guy is nice and healthy and ready to turn into a beetle. This one is not ready, so he goes back into the mix. Again, if they're not in the shape of a C, I just put them back in the mix so that they can continue to eat and grow larger. Maybe next time they'll be ready. Okay. Oop, that one, a little bit dead. He's on a side. These cups are just pennies a piece. Um, if I get one that dies, I try not to reuse the cup. Um, it's just cheaper for me not to have the risk of that mold or bacteria that's in their decomposing bodies get mixed in with a new worm. So I just throw the whole cup out. Um, I don't know if that's best practices. It's just what I do. So these four are in the shape of, she, uh, of a C. This one is alive and ready to go back. Ooh, look how long this worm is here. I don't know if you can tell. It's a really long worm. That one's probably ready. I try not to wait too long once they turn into pupa. I don't want them to turn into beetles inside of the cup um, because once they're beetles, they need fresh air and food and moisture, and they get none of that inside of the cup. So I try to get the pupa out as soon as I can. So that one gives a shedding inside. But let me know that it was not ready. I pulled it a little bit too early. in the shape of a C. He's ready. Not ready.
security. Dead. C. 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 One of these days I'm going to spend the entire weekend cupping my supers to fill up this entire rack. I'm tired of these small numbers. I want more supers. I actually just had a uh, mealworm farmer ask me <coughs> today if I had 25,000 supers to sell him because I guess there's a major shortage all over the place. Even Rainbow Mealworms can only sell 5,000 a week to customers because they're running short. So if you have the time and the space and the desire to farm super mealworms, it is in your advantage because there is a major shortage all over the country for these things right now. Big time demand and they sell more per worm than regular mealworms do. Because look at all this labor that's involved just to get what a dozen or two worms or pupa. Alright, so these are all in the shape of a letter C. I'm gonna put them right back on the tray to finish doing their their job. <laughs> supers here. Um, if I were a better person I would cup a lot of these that I'm seeing while I'm still at it, while I'm still here, but this one looks long enough. Uh, the other great thing about these concrete mixing tubs 
I don't know if you've seen them, is they have measurements on the edges. So two, war uh, two inches about the length that super should be when you cut them. So I, uh, they're, they're fast and they're not gonna stay still for long, but I try to like put them on here and eyeball to see if they're about two inches. This one's a little shy, maybe uh, an eighth to go. Um, but that's a good way to determine if they're long enough. Use the measurements that are on these trays. All right, I'll add a little bit of moisture later when I'm done. You can see there's a lot of holes that they've been chewing through on my egg flat. Uh, Superworms love dark more than regular mealworms do. So that's why I put this on here just to give them an extra super dark place underneath to hang out. These are going to need some substrate on top for them to eat when they get out. So for now, I'm just going to temporarily transfer them to a new container, add some substrate, simply brand. going to add some chick starter. But remember this is where they're going to be laying eggs and chick starter is hard to sift through my strainer so I'm going to decide against doing that right now. And I'm just like my other trays I'm going to lightly sprinkle these on top so they're evenly spread out. Voila! We've got our super pupa. Uh, beetles are really large and like to climb, so I'm making sure all the dust is wiped off the edges so they don't have anything extra to cling on to. Um, eventually, once I get enough, I'm going to probably have to put them in these uh, deeper containers, or maybe even in here. Um, but for now, it's my first little batch. After starting back up again, hopefully these will be nice, healthy beetles that will multiply many, many times. All right, folks, well, that is all for this video, I think. I can't think of anything else that um, I do during the week that I've missed. Uh, I have skipped a lot of trays today in this video. Uh, I need to go back and finish sifting the rest of these. I just wanted to show you a little bit of how I do each major step or each major type of tray that I've got. Um, but for now, this is gonna be the end of it. If you have any questions or suggestions or tips, leave them in the comments below. Um, I hate that I'm the guy saying this, but be sure to like and subscribe to check out more videos. Um, but in all, honestly, I have dozens of videos that I've already posted and they're all tips and tricks to help make your mealworm farming a delight. Uh, but for now, that's the end of our video. We will see you next time.